Hello and welcome back to Cypheros. Today we're going to explore the decorators in Python. So we're going to have a quick definition and then we're going to see all the building ones that there are on this programming language. First, what are decorators? Basically, they pass a function as the argument of another one. This is the syntax. To declare the call of a decorator, we use the add symbol and the name of the decorator, above the definition of a function. This is the same exact thing that passing that function onto that decorator. Now we want to have a simple approach so you can understand it. First, we define our decorator as a function like we normally do on this case we're going to square a number so we pass uh, this parameter func can be anything any name do not worry about that but what is needed is this wrapper okay the wrapper is also a convention but i think it's when most declare a function inside of, of this uh, square one now this line is basically what does the function therefore we just pass this argument with parentheses if not it will be not read as a function and then we uh, square this so what returns this function will be a square and then we return this wrapper so once we declare this basic function that just returns a 10 number no matter what happens this will be passed into this square one so this is how decorators work another example a little bit more complicated will be this one we're going to get a text as parameter uh we're uppercase after just separating each letter with an underscore so as you see we have the decorator in this case would be the snaker and then uh, we're going to have the uppercase function the difference over here is that the wrapper will take arguments because this uppercase function is getting arguments. Therefore, these are the default arguments. Do not do not change it. These are a specific keywords. And what we do is to list what does this function returns. Basically, these args are these ones. And then we iterate over the function while joining every character with a underscore and then we just said okay and this is hard coded and what does this with this is naked parameter will be first take the text uppercase it and then go onto this sneaker function if there is another decorator over here over it okay we can yes nest more decorators the order will be ascending so we have this function then a sneaker and then the next one the next one the next one etc and so on now let's get into be all the decorators in python the first one is property and what it does is just returns a property value often used for getters methods so if we have this cipher call that just gets a, a name as a parameter well if we want to get that name we use this property decorator by the way these decorators are just building functions again okay? just on the same way number two class method so rather than self, it uses a CLS keyword. This is just another identifier. We know that self, and by this, this CLS works similar to the this keyword on JavaScript. Just obtain the attributes of a class, the class that the attributes belong to actually. Now with a static method, it is basically the opposite because we don't use self or the CLS. So these are just for methods that that do not do something with the, the attributes of the class. For example, a, a custom message if something went wrong. And from this instant on, uh, we're going to import function tools. Yet, and this is a building library, okay, integrated already in Python, therefore, th this is technically building also. What does this is basically Give the metadata of the function. Let me explain you how this works. So if you remember this, this hello function is being passed to this my decorator function. And this will be always on its declaration from this instant on because we have this add line. So normally if we print this hello 
dot um, underscore underscore name underscore underscore but actually it will take is the name of this my decorator because it this hello is wrapped on my decorator yes because we have this between decorator one you actually keep all the data from this hello function therefore what is printed in rather than my decorator is hello because this is the metadata of the function this is the next one and what this does is catches the function's result as many times as we declare it often used from recursive functions i suppose that you know the fibonacci sequence is basically a sequence of numbers we start by zero and one and the next number will be the sum of the two previous ones we have this function over it we set this decorator with a parameter of max size therefore what it will do will will be take the end because we return it and then take this we want to call and this we want to call yeah this will be not the first three words we are actually getting a Fibonacci sequence of 10 numbers therefore it will be the eighth number the ninth number and the tenth number i don't remember it exactly but here you have the three last between that first 10 ones similarly we have functos cache which is in just the same thing but but the max size parameter is automatically set as none so we don't have to pass any parameter over here every data of the function is already caching finally we have single dispatch also required import now what this does is runs the specified code depending on the first art so we can modify a function and on its code inside depending on what the type of the file is the first definition will be for anything else right if the value is not an integer or a string we modify this uh, verifier with this decorator which is take the name of the function and then register so if the value is an integer we'll display this and if this is a string we display this i was thinking of what would be its utility if we already have the conditional statements that is if elif and else and there is a a clear difference because conditional statements may not be that performant if they are too many in comparison to the single dispatch also the code looks cleaner yep single dispatch may be a little bit slower because it requires import and, and it is basically using another function inside this one yet for big projects it's better to approach for this so if we pass this verifier uh, with an argument of 10 uh, this will call the interversion that is now that's a string and it will uh, turn this 10 into a string similarly if we pass this high we're going to have a uh, no that's uppercase it and over here and this guy will be uppercase now do not think that if you pass a boolean for example this will be for anything else because this value int is actually being analyzed as a boolean this then is true it's a truthy value it's a positive number different from zero therefore this will be turned into into true and if this statement is that value is integer this is true this will be turned into that if we want to pass it specifically a boolean we must declare another version of this verifier with value equal to boolean i hope that this is understandable so thanks for watching sirs if there is nothing else subscribe to the channel i don't know what else to say and see us on the next one